Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington, and whenever I'm hanging out in the woods, like I'm doing right now, I often encounter living organisms, and most of the time I can place these living organisms into various kingdoms of life. For example, the fungal kingdom, or the animal kingdom, or the plant kingdom, or the bacterial kingdom. But occasionally I'll encounter a living organism that doesn't fit neatly into one of those packages, and such is the case whenever I find a slime mold, which is currently placed in the protist kingdom. And this beautiful slime mold right here is one of the most beautiful in the entire world. This one is Hemitrichia serpula, the pretzel slime mold, because of the way that it looks. For a very long time, slime molds are placed in the fungal kingdom because of the way that they look, because of where they grow, you know, damp places on wood and mulch and soil, and because of the way that they reproduce, essentially through spores in many cases. But there are a couple key differences between mushrooms and slime molds. For example, the way that they ingest food. So mushrooms, and specifically the mycelium, that network that's either in the soil or in a substrate like a log, basically secretes enzymes and digests the food externally, then absorbs the food. But with a slime mold, they absorb food through a process known as phagocytosis, and they absorb the food, then they digest it inside themselves. And what the slime molds eat include bacteria, they eat yeast, they eat fungal spores, and they eat fungal mycelium as well. Now, this slime mold is placed in a group known as the myxomycetes. So if you're ever looking in a fungal textbook or a fungal identification book and you see something called the myxomycetes, you're basically looking at a slime mold. And there are hundreds of myxomycetes worldwide. Now, as I said, this specific one is Hemitrichia serpula. So let's look at that Latin name for one second. Hemitrichia means half hairy because at least some members in this genus have a spore bearing structure which is half smooth and half hairy. The stalk is essentially smooth and the spore bearing structure almost looks like it has little hairs on it. And the whole structure kind of looks like a balloon or like an umbrella, but not so with this particular species. But serpula makes sense whenever we're looking at this because serpula means a little snake or it means creeping. If you look at the spore bearing structure, you'll see that it's creeping or it's kind of snake-like. Now this particular structure started out as a spore. The spores germinate into little structures known as either swarm cells or mix amoeba. These are vegetative structures that eat, and again, they eat the bacteria, they eat yeast, they eat fungal mycelium and spores. And then through sexual reproduction, a unicellular, the multinucleate structure, so many nuclei, but one single cell essentially, and the structure that's formed is known as a plasmodium. And we can see the plasmodium with our naked eyes. However, I'm already in the next stage. I can't see the plasmodium right here because whenever there's a lot of light or whenever food is exhausted or chemical signals are secreted, the plasmodium turns into something like this, which is the sporophore or the fruiting body. So we're looking at the fruiting body right here and the spores are inside here. Now this particular fruiting body is known as a plasmodiocarp. So what the heck is a plasmodiocarp? Well, carp means fruit and plasmodio comes from plasmodium because the preceding structure was a plasmodium. And the reason that it looks like a network pattern right here with all these veins is that the plasmodium look like this. And then the spores essentially congregate into this structure right here. So that's why it retains the morphology and the structure of the plasmodium. That's why they call it a plasmodiocarp. Now, not all slime molds do that. Many times you'll see slime molds that look like just a single blob, or many times you'll see them looking like that balloon that I mentioned, or like an umbrella. But this specific structure is a plasmodiocarp because it resembles the plasmodium. But this is the fruiting body. And if I would poke through here, I would see that there are literally billions of spores in here. And then that cycle will repeat again whenever these spores are dispersed and they land in suitable habitats. Now perhaps what's probably most fascinating about slime molds, besides their beauty and besides the indescribable thrill that you get whenever you discover a new slime mold, is that they're quite intelligent. And many tests have been done on slime molds, showing for example that they're able to successfully navigate through mazes, detecting the shortest routes possible between food sources, that they're able to learn through the process of habituation, and they're able to transmit information successfully to nearby genetically compatible slime molds whenever the two bodies fuse together. Now keep in mind, slime molds don't have brains, they don't have nervous systems, and they're essentially one cell, they're unicellular. And this really helps us understand that nature is quite intelligent, and intelligence is not just a hallmark of the human species. And so I encourage you to get out there and look for slime molds of all kinds, including the pretzel slime mold, Hemitrichia serpula, one of the most beautiful slime molds, in my opinion. You'll have a lot of luck finding it if you look in deciduous woodlands, and you can find it this time of year. So see if you can get outside and find it right now.